In this video, we're going to be talking about potential Tropical Cyclone 1 that is likely to be named Tropical Storm Alex later on today or tonight. This is expected to bring a variety of hazards to the Florida Peninsula and the Florida Keys from tornadoes to flash flooding. And I got all those details for you guys in this video. If you guys do find this video helpful, be sure to subscribe to the channel with notifications turned on for future updates. Also be sure to drop a like on the video if you guys want other people to get this information as well. And always make sure that you are staying tuned to the National Weather Service and the National Hurricane Center for official information in these kind of situations. Let's get down to business here. First off, we are taking a look at our infrared uh, satellite imagery here of what potential Tropical Cyclone 1 currently looks like. Again, this is anticipated to be named Tropical Storm Alex later on today or tonight and currently we have some very tall clouds that are situated over western cuba here we're already seeing a lot of cloud co cover over central and south florida from this system this storm is actually encountering a little bit of shear it appears and shear is actually going to weaken tropical systems so because of this this probably is going to be a relatively low end tropical storm when it does really bear down on florida uh, but this will still cause impacts we're already seeing impacts right now flash flooding tornadoes storm surge and strong winds are all going to be a possibility with potential tropical storm alex so let's break down all those details and first off here is the cone forecast from the national hurricane center and as you guys can see they are anticipating this to be a tropical storm at least through monday morning once it gets west of bermuda but it could still be a potential or post tropical storm even into at least wednesday as well so we have five days of anticipated tropical storm activity now we are anticipating some tropical storm impacts once this makes landfall in Florida, likely tonight or early tomorrow morning. This will then move off the coast of Florida and likely re-intensify, potentially causing impacts to Bermuda as we get later in the day on Monday. And we have several tropical storm watches and warnings that have been posted for Florida, the surrounding Bahamas, and portions of Cuba as well. Now, here are those tropical storm warnings that have been issued for Florida. And as you guys can see here, all of these dark red shaded areas in central and south Florida and all of the adjacent keys and surrounding coastal waters, these are tropical storm warnings right here. And tropical storm warnings warnings are issued. They are complex warnings, basically, that have all the details from the potential storm surge impacts, the flooding impacts, uh, the wind impacts, the potential for tornadoes, and all of those details can be found on the National Weather Service's website, so be sure to stay tuned for that if you are under one of these tropical storm warnings. Now, here are our chances of seeing some tropical storm force winds in a given area. Tropical storm force winds are winds greater than 39 miles per hour for over a minute long, and and that is likely across central and south Florida, also the Florida Keys as well. And as you guys can tell, as this gets off the coast of Florida, uh, it's probably going to re-intensify. And then even areas like Bermuda could see some tropical storm impacts as we get into early next week. So we need to keep an eye on this for sure. Now here's our chances of seeing severe wind gusts, and those are winds over 50 knots or 58 miles per hour. By the National Weather Service's terms, these are what would constitute a severe thunderstorm warning. So in the case of tropical systems. These are winds greater than 50 knots. That is a possibility throughout the course of the next five days, but not over any land areas. This is likely going to be west of Bermuda, east of Florida, probably going to be over open waters where we see the strongest winds. Now, here's your potential arrival time of these tropical storm force winds. So, as far as the Florida Keys go, we're, uh, we're already looking at rotating storms and impacts in South Florida right now, but as far as the potential to see tropical storm force winds, we could be seeing that later on this evening it's tonight across the Florida Keys. By early tomorrow morning, most of South Florida would already be looking at those, those winds over 40 miles per hour. And then as we get uh, between uh, Sunday evening and Monday morning, areas like Bermuda could also be looking at some tropical storm force winds. So here's the peak storm surge that is anticipated from the National Hurricane Center. This is an experimental outlook, and we're not expecting si substantial extreme storm surge, but there is enough of it there. This is inundated, uh, inundated waves that shouldn't be there. We're anticipating one to two foot storm surge from middle of Longboat Key to Marco Island, which is off the southwest coast of Florida. You'll get one to two feet of inundation in those areas. This also includes 
Charlotte Harbor. The most substantial storm surge is anticipated from Marco Island to Card Sound Bridge in South Florida, where up to three feet storm surge will be possible. And across all the Florida Keys, we can be getting storm surge up to two feet. Same situation from North Miami Beach down towards Card Sound Bridge. So uh, roughly one to two to one to three feet of storm surge is anticipated across southern Florida. So be sure to keep an eye on that. Now, there is a significant risk of flash flooding, probably one of the highest threats out of this entire event. And South Florida actually has a moderate risk of excessive rainfall that has been issued by the Weather Prediction Center for today and tonight. What that basically means is we are anticipating numerous flash floods across that area. So this would include South Florida, areas like Miami. You're all under that threat of significant flash flooding later today and tonight night. Uh, in this yellow area, we could still be getting some scattered flash flooding. That's a broad area outlined for tomorrow. Uh, and in this green area, you could get some spotty flash flooding in the area, but nothing too significant is expected in the surrounding region. Now, here is the total rainfall that is anticipated over the course of the next two days. This is all into early Sunday morning when most impacts would have likely died out by this point. Uh, and as you guys can see here, we are looking at a good four to eight inches of rainfall anticipated across much of central and south Florida. Uh, areas like Miami could be looking at over six inches. Same for Cape Coral as well. Could there be some spotty areas that get over eight inches of rain even down through the Florida Keys? Absolutely. So this is going to be uh, a pretty substantial concern. Even further north from Orlando to Daytona Beach, you could be looking at one to two inches of rain as well. Now, here's the simulated radar uh, for what we anticipate from the storm. This is by 5 p.m. Eastern time later today. We're already, again, looking at some rain in South Florida. This rain will likely get very heavy across the southern portion of the peninsula, including Miami, as we get towards the 11 p.m. hour today. By 5 a.m. tomorrow morning, we're still looking at heavy rain across the southeastern coast of Florida, north of Miami here. And then, actually, the low will actually move off of the Florida coast uh, by, by the late morning hours tomorrow, but there likely will be some rain fall sticking around around eastern Florida and south Florida as well. Then that pretty much moves out of the area as we get into late tomorrow afternoon into the evening hours. But again, the storm will strengthen over open waters as it moves away from Florida. Here's our potential wind gust that we could be seeing throughout that time. We're already probably seeing some gusty winds, especially across the western portions of the Keys where gusts are maybe over 45 to 50 miles per hour. Uh, and then as we get into this evening, gusts could be approaching 45 miles per hour in south Florida. Miami, you're looking at gusts around 35. That gets even worse in those higher populated areas as we get into early tomorrow morning with gusts of 45 to 50 miles per hour likely. Definitely tropical storm force in those areas. Most of the gusts will be out of the area by late morning tomorrow as the rainfall will go as well. And then stuff pretty much calms down as we get later on into the afternoon hours tomorrow, just like the precipitation will. Now, another thing that we have to keep in mind about this event is that there also is tornado potential there. And there's actually, the, the situation, as they said in the Tropical Storm warnings, actually, the situation is favorable for tornadoes. We have a 5% chance of a tornado touchdown within 25 miles of a given location, which doesn't seem like a lot. But remember, again, tornadoes are rare. Uh, there's going to be maybe some localized areas that could have higher potential. You never know with these kind of systems. But the situation is favorable for a couple or a few tornadoes today and tonight, especially across deep South Florida through the Keys, including areas like Miami and the surrounding metro area. The threat of a tornado or two shifts a little bit further north for tomorrow, although the potential overall is likely going to be quite a bit lower. Now, here's what our models are showing for the overall intensity of a potential tropical cyclone one. So as you guys can see here, almost all of the models, with the exception of one, has this becoming a tropical storm. And actually, all of them have this already a tropical storm force so this is why it probably will get named later on today but it's actually probably going to reach its max intensity as we get probably 55-ish hours out from now, uh, which is by the time it would have already moved through Florida. So f making landfall with Florida isn't going to weaken it a whole lot. It'll actually strengthen once it gets back out uh, over the south uh, over uh, the southeast Atlantic water, the southeast U.S. waters, and then continues to move northeastward. It'll probably strengthen a little bit, and by three hour or three days out from now, it'll probably reach its strongest intensity. That then after that, after about 72 hours out from now, then it will likely go on a weakening trend and eventually die later on throughout the period. But it will be a pretty strong storm. Definitely looks to be within tropical storm bounds. So that is going to wrap it up for today's update. If you guys did enjoy it and you want to see more of them, be sure to subscribe to the channel with notifications turned on. Also be sure to drop a like on the video as well. But until the next video, stay safe and I'll talk to you guys back here next time.